So it's just <coughs> up and down and they keep pressing. Okay. Uh, my name is Hans Sørensen from Way Dragon and Frank is following me. Um, first, our project is about how to combine an existing technology, uh, Way Dragon, demonstrated back 2003 to 2008 in a test uh, reservoir in Denmark in scale 1 to 5 of Atlantic and a combination of, uh, in combination with uh, seaweed. Uh, another technology documented, as Frank will explain. Uh, the advantage combining the Wave Dragon technology producing electricity behind it, that will be Lee, that means that the production of seaweed can be expanded further out in the sea. And uh, without this project here, we have probably never made a, a business case together. We know each other from an older time, and that's probably why we have been able to make a business case in such a short time. But we had our business case each, each of us beforehand. So the consortium, as already described, we also have an independent organization, Bellona Foundation, not present here from Norway, involved. Uh, the Way Dragon is a Danish company, uh, also with activity in, way, in West Wales. Seaweed is a Norwegian-based uh, company and Bellona. So the Way Dragon technology, just shortly, we have the inventor present here, Eric Chris Messen, in back in the room here. Uh, and uh, we have the seaweed, as uh, Frank will explain. And uh, Bellona also combining it with wind energy. We can combine, but we are not included wind energy in this uh, uh, business case. Well, back to the way Dragon technology, it's a floating platform. Uh, it's uh, that large, so it get out of resonance with the waves. So when the waves hit the ram, the waves are running up the reservoir and you just have a floating uh, hydropower plant where you take out the water. You can adjust the level, floating level, depending on the sea state. And you have different designs developing uh, depending on the wave climate uh, so here we are talking about uh, 24 kilowatt a meter wave front, which is typical for the southwest waves. Here you see a picture, a video from the uh, first deployment back in 2003 to 5, 6, where you see how the waves hitting the ramp, running up. You see the turbines here behind. And from the other side, you have the focusing uh, uh, devices here, the two uh, wings focusing the waves so they get better up in the reservoir. And you have the turbines on off regulated so the water just run down uh, into the turbines. We have been operated uh, producing electricity for more than 20,000 hours. I guess it's still a world record for a wave device. Uh, the wave energy absorption has been uh, verified. In the meantime, uh, after 2007, where we have produced a full environment impact assessment for the West Wales, but lost our money uh, because our match funding uh, venture capitalist, he, unfortunately for us, well, also for himself, passed away and his company was uh, reorganized. And in the meantime, we have been looking for another 15 million euros and we gave back the money to the West, uh, to the Welsh uh, Government Assembly and the money we have received for the European Commission. But we are ready. How about the seaweed? Yeah. <laughs> so first of all, the, the seaweed is, falls under aquaculture, uh, as it is obvious, which I don't really agree to in the context to this project, because you, the, the, the detail to which the sectors like floating offshore wind, uh, fixed offshore wind are are separated. Seaweed should be separately seen from aquaculture because everybody thinks aquaculture is finfish aquaculture. Uh, but in this case it is and uh, I think it's, it will be in the future. There is a little bit of hype about seaweed at the moment uh, on several levels and uh, this is uh, some of the reasons why. Uh, it is a huge resource uh, but almost all of our food energy still comes, comes from land. Um, 
Seaweed farming has some very, very interesting uh, technical aspects. There is no fresh water needed, uh, not even for the land-based uh, 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 operations, except for washing your hands, maybe. There is uh, literally no land area compared to the, to the area that you would need for, for agriculture, uh, and uh, also no fertilizers. Seaweed just needs sun, salt water, health, uh, healthy, uh, clear salt water, and nutrients. Uh, there is a very wide uh, range of market opportunities. Large part of this is not exploited yet, or not even explored. We're in the process of this. Uh, and this is why we at, at CES, we usually say it's uh, maybe the largest unexploited resource in Europe. Um, the very uh, brief look on the worldwide uh, situation. Seaweed is not an unknown elsewhere. In Asia, it is a big uh, independent uh, uh, business branch. It is a, a very large contributor to aquaculture. And actually, worldwide, most of the aquaculture uh, <coughs> production is uh, by seaweed. Uh, this is just a very, I'm, I'm flipping through very fast. We can, uh, I'm happy to answer uh, more detailed questions later. But this is just a very brief uh, uh, display of all the products that already exist uh, involving seaweed. Uh, the big challenge right now is to make seaweed cultivation as such uh, uh, sustainable uh, economically because you need a biorefinery approach. You need to take out the best bits here and there to make it valuable enough. That is the big challenge that the industry has at the moment. This is our company in Norway. We have uh, learned to cultivate, cultivate the, this, uh, the seaweed, uh, several species, from uh, cradle to grave, if you wish. So uh, it's everything from the mother plant collection for the, uh, for the spore uh, reproduction to the incubation, the actual deployment, technical alternatives, how to deploy and how to harvest. There's lots of things uh, still being uh, an issue, uh, but the, yeah, this is just uh, while I'm talking, this is our video from the, you can see that on the website, it's showing part of the production process uh, this year, we have uh, harvested only 20 tons, uh, although we could go up to 150, but the bottleneck is the processing and the actual uh, turning the seaweed into a product, into a fresh product, right, when you take it out of the water, you have some issues with uh, it staying fresh. So it's worse, th worse than fish. You need to be even faster in, in, in processing it. So the food sector, we are, we are looking into food at the moment, and that is the near future. And that has not been really uh, very developed in Europe so far. The big challenges here and why we think it's so interesting to team up uh, with uh, wave energy or renewable energies in general, and uh, wave drain in particular in this case, is Seaweed farms require a lot of space. So with the whole space issue that has been uh, addressed here, maybe seaweed is the worst candidate. Yes and no, because uh, you can combine it very well with other uses, and it is very little in the way. You can submerge most of the seaweed farm two meters uh, under the water, and you just have some buoys. If you have a proper uh, boat, you can just drive uh, above it. Uh, so we have, uh, but we have, we will have the challenge anyway that early or later we will have to go to more exposed waters, to open waters. Uh, then a country like Portugal is very interesting for cultivation, uh, and there pretty much every, all the coastline is fully exposed and open. So you have two ways to do that. One is to have a passive structure that automatically, when the waves go big, somehow submerges. Aquaculture, finfish aquaculture has looked into this and. There are ways to do this, but it's still uh, quite a long way to go. And the structures we're looking at are probably less easy to handle. The other one is to make active submergence in storms. That is using the wave energy to actually submerge your whole farm when the storm comes. And that's a very attractive idea because uh, the seaweed can easily survive five days down there without anything. You don't have the issue like in aquaculture in general that you have to go back and forth feeding the the seaweed, it's, it's happy just to be there as long as you don't destroy it. Uh, so that's where, what the basis of this uh, collaboration is. Uh, I personally believe it's a very interesting, uh, it would be a very interesting case even in pretty near future to make a pilot cultivation in combination with a, a structure like the wave dragon because you can also use the, the leeway of the structures of the, of the wave energy device 
because of its size, it works a little bit like a floating breakwater, and that helps a lot in the beginning of the uh, in the initial phase of the cultivation of the harvest operations. Uh, you need some uh, calm sea, and I think that's already my part. Yeah, you can defend the IRR and well, the reason why we're not employing more people. <laughs> well, <laughs> and this is about. Um, uh, the three and four cases we have been running through. We have the pilot product uh, uh, in Wales where we are talking about putting on one device, a four megawatt device weight dragon, and harvesting 80 tons a year seaweed. Uh, the first uh, commercial project we assume, uh, hopefully uh, in Wales still, uh, with nine weight dragons, uh, totally limited to 30 megawatt, usually it will be 36. But there are some limits in maximum power, and uh, we cannot maybe rely on full production all the time. So uh, with nine devices, uh, harvesting 4,000. And uh, here the second commercial uh, again uh, with the same, uh, but with a refined where we have uh, where we are using the lesson we have learned here, and where we are talking about the third commercial product we are really running up in in uh, large quantities talking about 180 megawatt like offshore wind farms or well smaller offshore wind farms uh, and um, harvesting 20,000 tons and uh, how about the key figures the key figure for the third commercial uh, product uh, is uh, giving a payback time of 4.3 years and uh, internal rate of return of 24 percent which I feel is quite promising so, what's the conclusion here? Well, with Dragon and uh, C, um, C, uh, C Energy Solution have a solid track record in their own fields. Uh, the, the joint uh, multi-user space uh, invited by Marie has uh, turned out to be a good idea, we find. We can, we can see benefit for both parties. There's synergy. Um, Red Dragon can serve as an operational base for the seaweed and the combi uh, combined uh, wave energy and aquaculture has a significant better economy. We are talking about about 10% where we, we try really to be very safe. It may be much more, but uh, we have just taken the advantage we can see just immediately. And thanks to uh, Mariva, we have uh, um, got this business case in place. So we hope we can get to some real test and demonstration as soon as possible. Well, thank you for your attention. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to open up by saying that this particular combination was uh, taken up by UCC Media and uh, by Ruth. McDonald, and she submitted a piece to the Irish Times, and was in uh, Sunday's edition of the Irish Times, as well as being it's also in a few other areas. So the, the context was talking about Marabay in general, but she particularly liked this particular project. We, didn't have, we had no influence over her selection. She just liked the uh, the, uh, the, the context. So the, the, the article starts off with Ray and the end decisions, and then talks about Marabay in general. Second point is. Uh, Today you'll hear that, that, that this, this combination is deployed in Wales and there's a few other combinations from Arabay planning to deploy, deploy in Wales. Wales seems to be very much open for business. Why is Ireland not in the rest of the world? It's, it doesn't seem to be happening in Ireland at the moment or, or elsewhere. And finally, um, what we've asked from companies, and I'm hoping other companies will talk about it tomorrow, was not only just to talk about their technical combination, but what was the impact of the Marabay process. Now, you, you were one of the few new Marabay combinations. You, you actually were individual companies. We came to you saying, how about combining? And you said, oh, that sounds like a great idea. So you started off from scratch. So you had to go through the technical plans for what you'd be combining. Then we forced you to look at the business model and the business model canvas. Mike then really went through your joint figures, seeing what the cost savings would be by combining, and then Demetrius went through an exhaustive risk. What was the benefit, what, what would you say was the greatest benefit to you? Where, where would you say that, um, yeah, is this something that 
you should, that <coughs> was absolutely essential, or was it that you know this could have been done in time? But what's your overall perception of the Marabay method? And I'm going to be asking all companies this tomorrow. So. <laughs> Well, I guess first of all that uh, you 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 made the temptation for us to, to try to discuss at a time where where we may not have, have realized that we could have benefit of going together. Yeah, mm -hmm. firstly, I would would have considered it too early yeah. to look at these things, but by an invitation like that, you say, well, yeah, we're not trying, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you look a little bit into it and you see that really makes sense. But the overall appro all approach, I think, probably you guys at Mali may have the same impression. We have this German expression of breaking something over the knee. <laughs> Ruth will understand what I'm saying. <laughs> it's uh, to be, you know, something, it had to be improvised a lot. And uh, I understand from the, uh, the whole Mali the process also had to improvise because the Commission suddenly asked you a different project from what you originally thought it was. And that's the same for us. We, 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 had to come up with numbers and with case studies uh, in a way that well, it was just putting the thumb in the wind and to try to <laughs> try to somehow uh, make it as realistic as possible in the time frame with the information available. Of okay, course, you need to. Uh, if you got the funding tomorrow, yeah, I mean, you 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 was revealed that you needed approximately between mm -hmm. 10 to 15 million uh, after you've taken all your funding. In the case, could you go with your Marabay business plan? Uh, and your risk assessment, and start tomorrow. I mean, have, have you on commercial path? Well, for the pilot. Yeah, for the pilot. Going to the pilot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Think I, I think so. Yeah. so and we've not been able to do that before. I, I will say for warning for other people: if we've not been knowing each other in, in with the wave energy for let's say 15 years or more, and we've probably not been able to make that business case in in half a year. Yeah. But but uh, because you need, of course, to learn each other, you need to trust your uh, uh, your partner. And you don't get trust just in a few months if you're not knowing each other beforehand. There's also an interesting uh, specificity to our project that is a bit different to most others here. Mm -hmm. and we are approaching it a little bit like a modular thing, uh, which maybe s some big company might like the idea to take it over and put a roof over it and, and make it their project. But most likely, these two, this combination will always be something where you where one, maybe the, the wave uh, dragon starts off and then a uh, seaweed farm comes there and, and, uh, and you combine it in a way. So uh, I think it's a, it's a kind of a, a separate approach uh, and then you join what you can join or what you have to join. But it depends on, the, a, I mean, you will save a lot of money if you do the environment impact assessment at the same time. For example, or, yeah, or, or the, the merit operations. Or but the, of course you can uh, do it separately. Yes. But it is, I think it is unlikely that you find the fisher. Maybe David Kempo can say more about this, about the aquaculture and wafer uh, case. But uh, I think it's a bit similar that uh, you are like an energy provider to the fish farm. But maybe one big fish farmer will one day come and just buy a lot of devices and make this their own combination. Right. Uh, At the moment uh, you're starting off though as Wave Dragon providing, or I think it's Wave Dragon is going to be the leader lead partner yes. is going to provide a seaweed solution package for wave energy. But, but of course, it's, yes. a, it's, a, it's one, one thing we learned about the, the project is that, that if we are looking at it from the very beginning and assuming that we one day go to, 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 to add a seaweed farm, then you can already, by your design, make sure that you are going to save. Else, of course, you're losing a lot of synergy if you don't. Mm -hmm. Uh, assume <coughs> that you have that opportunity. But it will not cost a lot to, to build that into the way, right? Yeah. A few minutes for some questions. Yeah. Sander? Yeah, my question is can you tell us how much ocean space you need for 20,000? <laughs> right now, well, there, there is this thing out there that uh, you calculate, or many scientists use 50 tons per hectare as productivity for brown seaweeds as a benchmark. I prefer to work with 20 for the presence, and then probably in future, when we are at this stage, we could think about 50. So we just have to make the calculation. <laughs> 20,000 tons, uh, 50 tons per hectare. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but it, is, it is a few. But, but it's not that much. You know, that, that's all you have to see with the combination. You oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, with uh, 180, with 45 weight dragons, you need something like 20 square kilometers. 
see, that's uh, that's about half you need. You are usually using an offshore wind for the for the same capacity. I think it is a little bit dangerous to use the space, uh, the predicted space use figures as a as a reference. Of course, we have to think about them and we have to question. Uh, but uh, actually, for knowing from wave energy, it is really if you look into the density that you can no, uh, theoretically put no. wave energy into the ocean, it will be always more dense than than uh, offshore wind. Yeah. At least if you use current figures, but you, you compare predictions to reality, and that's always a little bit dodgy. So. But as I cal as I remember the calculation, uh, uh, we in wave energy will use more space than you need for the production you have assumed behind it. You will not give the no. I think it's more even. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then also for aqua, if you go go into fish aquaculture. Uh, of course, you have these 12 cages uh, in a very small area, in one or two <laughs> hectare area, and you have a production of uh, 20,000 tons per year just in this in this one fish farm. But you cannot you cannot put one after the other. You have to space them a lot because of the environmental impact and stuff like that. So there's uh, I, I think there's still a long way to go. Mario did a nice kickoff, I think, and, and uh, managed to connect real projects with all these uh, more or less desktop approaches, but uh, there's a long way to go to <coughs> actually get some real data. And without prototypes or pilot plans, we will, we will probably not get there. OK. I think we've done very well. Well, Dimitris, so say coffee time. Mm -hmm. Quick question. Uh, just a comment on the question. Uh, I think I might be stating the obvious to say that uh, a knock-on effect for the ocean energy uh, sector would be the creation of the market that is not there at the moment, because essentially seaweed energy solutions would need this energy of this device. So the, the whole point at the moment is that if you had 10 of these devices, there wouldn't be somebody to buy them. But by demonstrating this synergy, uh, you are actually demonstrating uh, perhaps a need so you might accelerate this. Yes, but we have to be a little cautious in pitching it too much because uh, we are literally, the, the joint use of ocean space here is, you could argue, we are not using the same space with two uses, right? Uh, so it's, it's, we have the wave dragons here and, uh, and we do use the fact of them physically being there. Uh, uh, so it's, it is a combination, it is a, a multiple use of space. Um, and yes, we can use sea areas that otherwise we wouldn't. That is true. Yeah. Or otherwise could would be much more difficult to work in, at least. Uh, so yes, you're right. I think at least in the for for a pilot uh, phase, this would be a very interesting uh, argument. Yes. Yeah. And as far as I can see, behind the wave dragon in the lead zone, you can you can only use that for let's say fish farming or for yeah. what we are not so happy about because the, um, uh, you have some troubles very often with the environment in so fish farming. But with seaweed, yeah. Seaweed are, you said something else. No, with, uh, if you are using fish, fish, fish farming, fish farm. so yeah, yeah that's, that's maybe, but that can be used also for that elite, but else you cannot use it for anything, I mean. Well, mariculture and uh, shellfish farms yeah. could be yeah. also, yeah. Yeah. it's the mm -hmm. same. But they are pretty much the same structures like seaweed. It's a very similar cultivation approach, really. Yeah. The techniques and the, the deck equipment you need will be different, and the logistics, but the, what is in the sea will, will look very similar. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Half an hour, and then we're going to finish off the panel discussion discussing the uh, the next direction of blue growth and multiple user space and multiple property platforms based on our discussions today. <laughs>